Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. And if you believe God to do something in your life. If you believe God to do something in your life, somebody say, do it, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all can act hallelujah a little bit better than that. Amen. Say, God, do it for me. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, this song hit different when you need God to do something in your life. Hallelujah. When you feel like you don't need nothing, glory to God. You don't feel like you got to say nothing. You don't feel like you got to do nothing. But when you need God to do something for you, hallelujah. When you need God to show up for you, when you want to make sure that God is hearing your prayer, hallelujah. How many of you won't be silent? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Your prayer becomes a little bit more harder, amen? Hallelujah. You, you start praying a little bit more fervently, amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You start serving a little bit better, amen? You start doing, hallelujah. Praise God, what it is you know that God is pleased with. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And under the presence of the Holy Spirit, even under the anointing, even now, we need to give a God a do it praise. Amen? Hallelujah. 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 When you say God will do praise, you're basically saying, I need you praise. God. God, if you don't do it, it ain't going to get done. God, Lord, whatever, what I need right now, God, it takes a holy and a benevolent God. Only you can accomplish what I need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 
in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Shabar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. Somebody say visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly into Ezekiel, Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, or Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Shabar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolded itself, and a brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, and out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had the likeness of a man. And everyone had four faces. And everyone had four wings. And their feet were straight feet. And the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot. And they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. And they had the hands of a man under the wings on their four sides. And they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another. They turned not where they went. They went every one straight forward. As for the likeness of their faces, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side. And they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four had also had the face of an eagle. Thus were their faces. And their wings were stretched upward. Two wings of every one were joined one to another, and two covered their bodies. And they went everyone straight forward. Whether the spirit was to go, they went, and they turned not where they went. Hallelujah. I'm going to skip down to verse 20. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went. Then there was their spirit to go. And the wheels was lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. And the likeness of the firmament upon the head of the living creature was of the color of ter the terrible crystal stretched forth over the heads above. And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Everyone had two, which had covered on their side, and everyone had two, which was covered on that side, their bodies. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of a host, when they stood and let down their wings. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads, when they stood and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads, was the likeness of a throne, as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of to the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw it as was the appearance of fire, and, and it had brightness round about as the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of the one that spake. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand upon my feet, and I will speak unto thee. Now let us turn to Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel chapter 8. And it came to pass in the sixth year, the sixth month, and the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld a lower likeness as the appearance of fire. From the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire. And from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of my head. And the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the northern. 
where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoked it to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision I saw in the plain. Then he said unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up my eyes the way toward the north. And behold, northward at the gate of the altar of the image of jealousy and entry. He said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abomination that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then he said unto me, Son of man, dig down on the wall. And when I had dig in the wall, behold, the door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every former creep of things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood about them seventy men of the ancient of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shephan, with every man a censer in his hand. And a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancient of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews is in the New Testament. times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory in the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by, him by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I for begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall say to me, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten in the world, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he said, Who maketh his angel spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens of the works are of thy hands. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 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 I read all of that. Amen. Go to God. Basically, so I don't have to go back. Amen. And take time and read it again. Amen. But I want to talk to you this morning, this first Sunday of the year. Amen. About visions of God. And I want to talk to you about Christophanies. And I want to talk to you about angelology. Go to God. Hallelujah. At the opening of Ezekiel 8. The first chapter I read to you. Basically, a little over a little over a year had passed before Ezra had his last vision. Or I should say, before he had his first two visions from the Lord. And I went back and I read to you Ezekiel chapter one as well, so you can see that first vision. But as Ezekiel was sitting in his house with the elders of Judah, we see that, that the hand of God the hand of Yahweh fell upon him in the sixth year on the fifth day of the sixth month, which is equivalent to September 17, 592 BC. Go to God. And Ezekiel saw a familiar sight. 
And he said, look, and I behold the likeness and the appearance of a man, and I'm going to go back and read it all again. Glory to God. But it says his loins from downward and then in upward was that of fire. Bless you. Was that of fire. Glory to God. And then in theologians, amen, when you break down this text in the Hebrew to go with it, amen, we believe that this is one of the Christophanies, amen, that we find in the Old Testament. A Christophany, glory to God, amen, is literally Jesus the Christ, amen, coming to the earth before he came in the Virgin Mary, amen, and was born as a human being, amen. And this is one of the awe-inspiring images of Jesus, all right, of the Christ, of the Messiah. Amen? Because we see, amen, a lot of us, we pray prayers and we say things, amen, that we don't really understand, amen, but we say that I want to see him and I want to see his face, amen, but if we were to see him in his full splendor, if we were to see him in his full array of heavenly divine, amen, attributes, amen, how many of we wouldn't be able to handle him? Amen, amen. Ezekiel saw him, he was a priest, amen, and he was also a prophet, amen, Glory to God. Amen. And he said it was fire going down from his loins downward, and it was fire going up. And his eyes were like fire. Glory to God. And he showed up. I read to y'all Ezekiel 9 in the New Year's Eve message. So I'm not going to go back and read that. Amen. Glory to God. But in Ezekiel 9, we read that that image of Christ, as well as there was somebody that was dressed in linen, glory to God, told Ezekiel, told but told amen, the priests that were there amen, to go around and slay from the oldest to the youngest, even the little boys and the little girls, everybody that was in the temple. And I explained to you all last night from 1 Peter chapter 4 that judgment starts in the house of God. Yes, yes. So while you are busy praying for everybody to get theirs, be careful because when God is ready and he's ready to stand up amen, and to give judgment, he's going to start with us first. So if you're smart, you will ask for grace and mercy, Hallelujah. even on your enemies, because God is looking at your spirit. And a lot of times when we're praying for other people, God will allow it to happen to you. Glory to God. Yes, sir. I told you last night that we are entering into the year 2023. We're already down here. But in the Jewish year, is called 5,783. The year 5783. The year 5783 is the, is the year of retribution, is the year of abundance, it is the year of overflow. And I'm not going to go back to the Hebrew and all of that again. We don't have the time to do it again. Glory to God. But isn't it wonderful, amen, amen, to understand, glory to God, that we are in a new season. We are literally in the last cycle. We are in the first cycle, amen, of what's called the 50th year. We're in a jubilee year, which means that God is going to release some things in our life in this year. Amen. Divine favor is ours in this year for the child of God. Amen. Glory to God. In our finances, in our health. Glory to God. In our mindset, in our relationship. Amen. God said favor is ours in this new season. Anybody glad about that today? Amen. I praise God, amen, that I'm still alive, amen, to be in what we call a jubilee year. A jubilee year, every 50th year, I would love to live, amen, in that kind of Israel, glory to God, where, how many of you have debt? Amen. How many of you have student loans? Amen. Amen, glory to God, praise God. So if somebody praise God on that, raise two hands on that. Amen, glory to God, we have hospital bills, amen. I mean, some of you have stuff on our credit report. Glory to God, repossessions and all of that. But how many know, amen, the way that it was set up, amen, for ancient Israel is that every 50th year, glory to God, amen, all of that stuff can be forgiven. I don't know about you, but I'll be jumping out of the roof. Glory to God. I'll, that would be one Sunday. Y'all be like, what is wrong with Pastor? Glory to God. I'll be jumping through the windows. Glory to God. And praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. But I wish the American government was set up like that. Glory to God. But amen. Praise God. Amen. That's what it was. Amen. But spiritually, how many know that these things are still the case? Amen. In this year, glory to God, God is going to bless you in spite of hard ground. God is going to bless us in spite of hard circumstances. Amen. There's nothing that can stop you because God honors time and he works through numbers. Amen. And God is a God that does everything decently in order. There's a season, amen, that God has planned for everybody that walks under his will. Yes, Lord. Look to God. Glory to God. Amen. But as we go to Ezekiel, 
We see an image of God. Hallelujah. That is ferocious. Ezekiel saw the same man in Ezekiel 8 that he had previously seen on the throne in his first vision in Ezekiel 1. Praise God. And as I already explained that this was Messiah. Amen. Glory to God. The angel of the covenant and the person of whom alone God manifests himself. And the man burned and glowed with, with Yahweh's glory and majesty as he did before. Glory to God. But Ezekiel physically never left his location. And how many know, glory to God, that when God gives you a vision, how many know you don't have to do anything? Because God is the one that is doing the explaining. God is the one that is doing the showing. In our day and time, admittedly, I believe that God shows up more when we're asleep than when we're awake. Because a lot of us, while we are awake, are not able to clear our mind enough so that God can literally speak to us. On, so when we sleep, that's when we wake up and say, was that a dream or was that a vision? Praise God. I had a dream many years ago in my early 20s. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Where I believe I was literally floating in heaven or being carried in heaven. Praise God. And I came, amen, there was some gates. You know how to say pearly gates? There was some gates. And it was like a city on a cloud far off. And I thought that I could get there and I thought I could fly over the gates and get in. But as I got closer, I realized I wasn't in charge. And as I got closer, I like ran into the top of the gates and I was trying to go, but something was keeping me down. I couldn't go in. And as I was coming out of this vision or whatever it was, I don't know if I was asleep. I don't know if it was a vision. I believe it was a vision. And then I realized I was in my room. I lived with my father at the time in Southwest Philly, with God, and I was in the room, moving to God, amen. And it was like I was not on the bed. This is a real story. And it was like I was in the middle, praise God, of the room, amen. The bed was below me. I'm in the middle, and the, and the ceiling is up here, but my eyes was closed. And it was like I was in two places at the same time. And as I was coming out of that vision, glory to God, and there was more to that, glory to God, amen. Praise God. It's like I, I realized. Amen. That is like I was slowly being put back on the bed, so to speak, so to speak. Amen. And I saw what was going on in the room, even though my eyes was closed. Amen. And it was like there was clouds and stuff on the on the ceiling. And I was scared enough. I was so scared because there was a you know, but the presence of God. I, it's hard to explain, but it's a, a reverential fear. I felt like that if I was open my eyes in that state when I came back my body, that I would have died. I was not supposed to see something or whatever. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But when I finally did open up my eyes, amen, the room was cloudy and smoky. Glory to God. And, and it was smoky and it was a smell of like where I was yes. in the vision. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. And the first thing I did, I, I got up and I ran downstairs. Glory to God. And I was wondering to my dad, but it was dark. The house was dark. It was, it was he asleep. So I couldn't tell him until the morning. My father's a pastor, for those who don't know. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. But I was so excited, you know, and, but also a little confused. I, I wasn't sure what was going on. Glory to God. But I wanted to get confirmation. But when I talked to him, he said, yeah, you had a vision. Yeah, you had, you know, of the God. But how many know that God is still doing these things? Yes, Lord. God is still doing these things. I'm going to explain why I brought that up in this message. Glory to God. Amen. Because a lot of people think that God is not still operating mm -hmm. in this way. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But he is. He is. Glory to God. Ezekiel saw a vision. Hallelujah. A man glowing. Praise God. Glory to God. The Lord, oh, in the vision, what did, what did the man do? He grabbed Ezekiel by a lock of his ear. Glory to God. And he pulled him up and he put him in between the middle of heaven and earth. How I many know the way that God operates with us may not be the way that you expect? All right. All right. How would you like it if God or Jesus showed up? in your bedroom at night and grabbed you by your hair and flew you into the middle. Glory to God. Praise God. How many people would like God to do that? I would. Glory to God. I'm like, hey, I'm like man, this, this is my Jesus. But I'm trying to give you a snapshot of who Jesus really is. We need to stop looking at God as some weak, anorexic guy over there and, and glory to God. Praise God. Amen. That's not amen, the image of Jesus that you should carry in your heart. Amen. Jesus, amen, praise God, is Lord, yes. amen, and he's Lord of everything, and he is strong, and hallelujah, and one day every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, yes. praise God, and so the Lord needed Ezekiel to see things from his perspective, and how many know sometimes God will take you from where you are to where you need to be, yes. so that you can see things from his perspective, yes. a lot of times some of us, we're so upset, 
We're so downtrodden and we're so worried about things because we're looking at it from an earthly perspective. And so sometimes God has to take you from where you are to where he at, just, just a little bit of where he at, amen, so you can see it, amen, from his perspective. Anybody here with me this morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. But this whole time, Ezekiel never left his location. I'm trying to talk to you about how God does things. Glory to God. Amen. We communicate with God spirit to spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. He was there, and the Bible says that there were 70 other priests around him. But at the same time, he was having this vision. By the end of this vision, this is going to open some of you up for heavenly, angelic visitation, amen, and more spiritual activity in your life. Keep listening. Glory to God. He wanted to show him things from his perspective. There was an idol that provoked the Lord to jealousy that was in the temple. Glory to God. Amen. And the glory of God in Israel was also there, and it appeared like it had been in the plain, which means like it was the appearance seen in Ezekiel's first vision by the river Shabar. Ezekiel then saw the fiery and glowing man with a rainbow around him. I read that to you, right? There was a rainbow around him, Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. And, and the son of, son of God was in the temple. Glory to God. The rainbow that God gave to earth, how I many you know that was not the first iteration of the rainbow? The rainbow, it means the covenant, amen, that God would never destroy the earth with water, amen? But in heaven, how I many you know it probably has a different symbol? Right. Yes. Yes. It's probably one of the most powerful symbols, glory to God. Praise God. Once we see Jesus, glory to God, amen, even as Ezekiel saw him with a rainbow around his head or a rainbow around his visage, glory to God, I think it might surprise us of what the rainbow really represents. I was thinking about this the other day because, how I many you know, the devil always tries to pervert true and powerful things. Because now, when you utilize a rainbow, we all understand, praise God, that it represents something totally different in today's time, right? It represents the homosexual community, community right? The LGBTQ, ABCD, EFG community, whatever they call it, right? Praise God. You can't even put a rainbow up. But back then, you could put a rainbow. Now, if you put it up, they're going to be like, oh, I didn't know you was part of that community. What community? Oh, I see the rainbow. Oh, let me, I didn't mean that. Glory to God. Praise God. But let I me mean, know, if the devil takes that symbol, that means that there's some more power to it that we can understand. In the heavenly realm, it means something. Maybe archangels, maybe every archangel has a rainbow. Or, and we don't know, amen, what it is, amen, but it's something about the rainbow. We already understand. Many people have come back, amen, from heavenly visitation, whatever you call it, and said that they have seen colors, amen, that we have never seen on earth. Glory to God. And there's something about the rainbow. I believe that there's more to it than what we see. But we only can see what we see, amen, with our human eyes, amen. I'll develop that more at another time. Glory to God. Praise God. But the Lord showed Ezekiel the abominations that the people were committing, including the abominations that the elders of Israel were secretly committing in the temple. It's one thing to be in church. It's another thing for church to be in you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many know, glory to God, if you are still, amen, going to go, amen, and just go ahead and be disobedient and, and basically put your middle finger up at God and do what you want to do, how many know it's probably better for you not to be in the house of God? Because we serve a jealous God. Amen? And I was asking God, like, God, why do you want me to start off with this message, amen, 2023? He says, because this is the year of retribution, like I told you last night. Either he's going to come and he's going to bless you real good in this year, amen, or you want to get your, amen, your helping of curses, amen, in this year. But the point is, is that God is watching you. Yes. God is watching us, amen, and when you know better, you should do better. Amen. He showed them abominations that the priests were doing. That's why you always hear me. Sometimes you see me preaching, I'm up here crying myself. I'm repenting myself. I say from the pulpit to the door, from the balcony to the floor, we all need God to forgive us. Amen. I need God to forgive me, just like you need God to forgive you. I need God to be gracious towards me. Amen? In and around the temple were men and women worshiping and honoring false gods. Praise God. The Lord promised to respond in wrath. We saw that in verses 5 to 18. The nation's idolatry was soon lead to the Lord removing his glory from the temple. Go to God. 
God will deal with us and he's gracious, amen? But there's a point where he will move his presence. And God is dealing with us personally in this season. And I, and I started here to make us understand the character of God. God is not afraid to deal with you. Right. Turn to your neighbor and say, God is not afraid to deal with you. In Ezekiel 8 and Ezekiel 9, we see that he started with the oldest. Amen? And he went down to the youngest. And he said, don't forget the boys and the girls. Our actions can cause our sons and daughters to receive judgment for things that they haven't even done. Right. Praise the Lord, somebody. My God. If you don't believe me, look at all of those beautiful Muslim children over there in the Middle East. All right? Glory to God. Look at all those beautiful Buddhist children over there in Asia. Look at all those beautiful Hindu children, Lord God. A lot of them are going to grow up and they're going to go to the same hell that their mothers and fathers are going. Why? Because their mothers and fathers, Lord God, is leading them the wrong way. Leading them away from Christ. And that's why it's our job to lead our children to the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and he's the life. It's our job, Lord God, amen, to make them to direct them, amen, glory to God, amen, to the things that's going to save their souls more so than the things that's going to save their bodies. <laughs> glory to God. Too many of us today's time are worried about what we're putting on our children instead of what we're putting in our children. Right. You just saw that at Christmas. But we need to be worried, more worried about what we're putting in our children than what we're putting on our children. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. We can provoke God to jealousy by putting things in front of them. That's called idolatry. Praise God. I'm not talking about just the idol that you up there worshiping. Yes, if you're Buddhist, you got this little fat man that you're worshiping. But not everybody do that. Glory to God. Amen. Your job can be your idol. Amen. Your relationship can be your idol. Amen. Your looks, your body can be an idol. Amen. Money can be an idol. Amen. Fame can be an idol. Whatever. Amen. Anything can be an idol. Amen. You can put music as an idol. You can put sex as an idol before God. You can do anything. Amen. And if you put it before God, how do you know God going to deal with you? Glory to God. Now we call that a Christophany. Jesus can literally show up himself. Now, I read to you in Ezekiel 1, amen, glory to God, about the angels showing up to Ezekiel as well. It wasn't just the Son of Man that showed up, amen. It was also angels. I read, remember, amen, the four beasts came out and they had four wings, glory yes. to God, and they had four faces, yes. glory to God, and they had straight feet and all of that kind of stuff. Praise God. What were they? They were angels. All right, and they had these wings, and it says under the wings they had the heads of a man. When we get to heaven, it's going to blow our mind. Yes. But God, if you think, Amen, that the only things out there is human beings, you are sadly mistaken. All right. If you think that the earth is the first world that God made, you don't understand, Amen, God. Look mm -hmm. God, praise God. God is a big God. Yes. Praise God. Look God, and let me know He also created the angels. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And this book, Angels, I have this book at home, it's ripped up, amen, I have it for many years. Billy Graham wrote a book on angels, amen. He relates the story by Reverend John G. Patton. He's a, he was a trailblazing missionary in the South Pacific in the New Hebrides Islands. And the story illustrates how God provide, provides angels to protect and care for his believers. Hallelujah. How many know that, that God, amen, has his angels protecting us? Yes. Glory yes. to God. And one night, Patan and his wife, found themselves threatened by hostile natives who were surrounded by the mission headquarters. Yes. And the Patars thought for sure that the natives was going to burn down the headquarters and kill them both. Amen? And they prayed throughout the night asking God to protect them from harm. The next morning they were astonished when they realized that the natives had gone away. They had no idea where or why they had left. So the missionaries, of course, they again prayed to God, I want to thank you for keeping us throughout the night. Glory to God for saving us. And about a year later, the story goes that a ch the chief of the natives that they were, uh, the native tribe that had threatened them, came and got saved. He got saved and he became a Christian. And he came to visit the Patans. The last name was the Patans. And, then, and when he asked about the incident of that night of terror, the chief told the Patans that he and his men were too fearful to carry out their plans of attack. They had seen an army of giant men and shiny garments with drawn swords in their hands, surrounding the mission grounds. And Patan and the chief agreed that there was no explanation other than God has sent angels to keep the missionaries from harm. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. 
The story is similar to the one told in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 17, where Elisha prayed, amen. Remember, he had, the, he had the young guy that was his apprentice, amen, and the young guy was fearful. And Elisha prayed that God would open up his eyes. And when he prayed that prayer, God opened up his eyes and he saw legions of angels around him. What am I saying to you? Glory to God. There is more with us than that is against us. Amen. We all have what we call a guardian, guardian angel. Some of us have more than one. Glory to God. It depends on how great your purpose is in this world. Yes, Lord. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. The story also shows how we should pray for our missionaries. Amen. Our apostles. Amen. People that have been sick. Apostle means those that have been sick. Those, amen, glory to God, that go abroad. I mean, we used to always be praying for them every night. Yeah. People come to me and say, I don't know what to pray for. I said, there's so much to pray for. Glory to God. Amen. In the kingdom. Glory to God. Praise God. And people today, both Christians and non-Christians alike, they're fascinated by the subject of angels. Glory to God. In fact, the sensational stories that abound and today, glory to God, praise God, amen, really are used to titillate the mind of, of human beings today. Amen. We got to be careful, amen, about the stories of angels, amen, amen, because people are taking it. The devil is using truth and perverting it, amen, and making people worship the angels instead of worshiping God. Right. I'm going somewhere with this, amen. That's why I'm bringing it up in this way. Glory to God. We have to know the difference, amen, between a God encounter and an angelic encounter. Yes. God still does that. He's still doing that today. Praise God. Amen? And so now we make it very sensational. Amen? Glory to God. I was watching a, a movie, amen, it was on HBO Max, and I was watching it. It's called His Dark Materials, and I was watching it because you see the angels literally flying in the sky, and you see a guy, amen, but it's, a, it's an intriguing story, amen, but they take it, amen, and they take it all the way to the left. And so when they show the angels, I was so appalled, I had to turn it off, amen, because the two men, two angels were together, and that one, there was one scene, where they were so close that the other angel kissed the other angel on the mouth. Yeah. <laughs> it sounded good at first. It's like, oh, wow. They really went to the left with it. Glory to God. And how do you know that Satan will take the truth and he will pervert it? Glory to God. Amen. And so if you're young, growing up, you think like, okay, well, okay, there is no woman angels, so I guess that that's what was going on. But how do you know the devil is a liar? Praise God. Amen. Because God is holy. And righteousness. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The epitome of holiness and righteousness is in heaven. Amen. In the Bible, it says that the angels are around the throne saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Glory to God. Amen. And so the devil, amen, is perverted. Amen. Truths. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so people have always been fascinated with the subject of angels. And the recent polls revealed that 76% of Americans believe in the existence of angels. 46% of Americans believe that they had a guardian angel, and 32% believe that they had a personal encounter with an angel. If I were to ask you here today, how many of you believe that you have had an encounter with an angel? Amen. Some of you. Amen? Amen. We'll about 20%. Go to God. Amen? Praise God. Studies show that 46% of Americans believe that they have had an, uh, that they have a guardian angel, and 32% believe that they have had an encounter. Back in 1975, when Billy Graham wrote the book on angels, he claimed that he couldn't find any books. But now, amen, glory to God, amen, more than 40 years later, you can go into the bookstore and you see a whole section devoted to what we call angelology. But if you go to seminary, you're going to take a class on angelology. You want to learn about Christophanies, but you also want to learn about angelology, the study of angels. Amen? But is this increase in, 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 uh, in angels in our country, is it a sign of growing spirituality in our country, or is it an indicator of something else? People are fascinated by the things that they can't see. All right. People are fascinated by the things that they don't know. Dr. Jeremiah, Dr. David Jeremiah, how many people know him? Where we go? And then even he says that the syrupy, sweet, spirit tingling taste of a little angelism can ruin people's appetite for the good, solid food of God's word and his gospel of grace and truth. What is he saying? That he does not, not, does not like to preach on angels, amen, because he believes that it's going to steer people the wrong way. So how many know we have to be careful? Even Time Magazine agrees with this assessment when it writes, for those who choke too easily on God and his rules, 
angels are the handy compromise. Mm. All fluff and marine kind, non-judgmental, and they are available to everyone like aspirin. Another writer says, angels offer spirituality devoid of Jesus and God. Belief in God has been so popularized in America that now belief in anything can happen. I don't know that that's true. That's true. And the search is on for spirituality, but without God. Hallelujah. But how many know we need to keep God included in everything, amen, that we worship? Yes, yes. How many of you find inter uh, angels to the, 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 the top of, the, of, of angels interested? I know I do. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, Hebrews. I took you out to the book of Hebrews. Praise God. Glory to God. And it talked about the angels being ministers of fire. A lot of people, they take the scripture and they use that as ministers on earth. But the, top, the, the true text, amen, in the Bible is really talking about God's angels. Amen. And so an angel can show up to you and they and then they can show up to you look like a human being, they can look like you and me, but they can also show up looking like angels of fire. Right. Amen? I'm telling you this, amen, because a lot of times someone will be rebuking, amen, things, amen, that have been sent by God. Yes. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hmm. Amen. Praise God. Do you know that there are over 275 references in the Bible to the subject of angels? First of all, we have to understand that angels are real. And you know that there are some people who overestimate angels and their importance, but there are other people who even deny the existence of angels, and that's not good either. They count it as mythology, but that's not true either. And angels, while they are invisible, does not mean that they're not real. I'm going to tell you another story. There was a missionary on furlough. And he told the, first, the following true story while visiting his home church in Michigan. He said, while serving at a small field hospital in Africa, every two weeks, I traveled by bicycle through the jungle to a nearby city for supplies. This was a journey of two days and required camping overnight at the halfway point. On one of these journeys, I arrived in the city where I planned to collect money from the bank, purchase medicine and supplies, and then began my two-day journey back to the field hospital. Upon arrival in the city, I observed two men fighting, one of whom had been seriously injured. I treated him for his injuries, and at the same time talked to him about the Lord. I then traveled two days, camping overnight, and arrived home without incident. Two weeks later, I repeated my journey. Upon arriving in the city, I was approached by the young man I had treated. He told me that he had known I carried money and medicines. He said, some friends and I followed you to, into the jungle, knowing that you would camp overnight. We planned to kill you and take the money and the drugs. But just as we were about to move into your camp, we saw 26 armed guards surrounding you. I'm reading this. It says, At this, I laughed and said that I was certainly all alone in that jungle campsite. The young man pressed the point, however, and said, No, sir, I was not the only person to see the guards. My friends also saw them, and we all counted them. It was because of those guards that we were afraid and left you alone. Mm -hmm. At this point, Lord God, in the sermon, one of the men in the congregation jumped to his feet and interrupted the missionary and asked if he could tell them the exact day that this happened. The missionary told the congregation the day, and the man who interrupted told him this, this story. Told him this story. This is what he said. This has happened in a real church service. He says, on the night of your incident in Africa, it was morning here, and I was preparing to go play golf. I was about to prep when I felt the urge to pray for you. In fact, the urge of the Lord was so strong, I called some men in this church to meet with me here in the sanctuary to pray for you. And then the man said this. He said, when everybody that I call to pray for the missionary, stand up. When you all stand up. When they all stood up, I guess you might know the rest of the story. The men who had met together to pray, they all stood up, and the missionary wasn't concerned with who they were. He was too busy counting how many they were. God. Praise God. And, then, and when he counted how many they were, guess how many they were? 26. There were 26 men that had prayed for him. Mm -hmm. 26 men. This story 
is an incredible example how the Spirit of the Lord moves in mysterious ways. If you ever feel God prodding you to pray for somebody, how many know you should, you should just do it? Don't be afraid to even ask God to send his angels. God hear me pray like that all the time, don't you? I say, God, send your minister angels to such and such. God, send your guardian angels. God, send four angels in the, in the corner. Amen, glory to God. Amen. I mean, a lot of times if you're a spiritual baby, you don't understand that kind of prayer. Glory to God. But when you understand who we are as agents of Christ in our humanity, in our human humanity, and who angels are, how many know that angels exist to serve? They exist to serve God, and likewise, they exist to serve those that God has assigned unto them. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. But they can't move unless we pray. Amen. And a lot of us, we want more spiritual activities in our life. But the only way to have a lot or to have more spiritual activity is if we pray. Amen. Prayer is the thing that releases spiritual activities, glory to God, and spiritual blessings in our life. And the reason why many of us don't have what we pray, what we want, and that is because we don't pray enough. Yes, that's true. More prayer, more power. Yes. No prayer, no problem. Glory to God. And then, so we have to have a prayer life. Glory to God. As the story I just indicated to you illustrates, all things are possible with God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. More importantly, yes. God hears and answers the prayers of the faithful. God works in mysterious ways. Hmm. Now, we should, understand, we should all know that it's a tragic mistake to think that just because you can't see something is not real. Yeah, amen. But I mean, many people live their life like that. Glory to God. I mean, electricity is invisible, isn't it? Yes. But I guarantee you it's real. Mm -hmm. If you don't think it's real, I want you to put your finger in one of these sockets hey, that's God. in this place. I guarantee you, even though you don't see it, it's a lie. Glory to God. It's a lie. How many know gravity is real? Yes. Praise God. You might can't see it, but it is. If you don't believe me, I want you to go to the roof of this church and jump off and see if you're going to fly. You ain't going to fly because there's something called gravity. You might can't see it, but it's real. And a lot of people, glory to God, as pastor, I have many conversations with many people about God, angels, all that kind of stuff. And I tell people, just because you can't see it, Hallelujah. don't mean that it ain't true. That's it. That's it. Praise God. God, amen, is spirit. And they that worship him must worship, worship him in spirit, spirit and in truth. And that's why we have to make sure that our spirit is right. Yes. Amen. In God. Glory to God. God wants us to have more. This is a season of abundance. Glory to God. But we have to walk in it spiritually. Yes. Spiritually. God, Jesus, the Lord, is in control of all things. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him, that is Jesus, glory to God, all things were created. Glory to God. Both in heavens and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created by Jesus and for Jesus. Is that in your Bible? Yes. That's Colossians 1.16, for those that are writing down. All things were created by Jesus for Jesus. So when you say, why am I here? Why was I born? Because Jesus wanted you to be born. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. There's another scripture in the Bible that says that we were created for his pleasure. It brings God pleasure. He created us. Yes. Just like a person that draws. It brings a pleasure yes. to create and then to draw. And then, and then, glory to God. And so it makes, it brings some pleasure to create. Yes, God. Glory to God. Jesus created everything we see and those things that we don't see, including invisible angels. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The phrase thrones, dominions, rulers is a reference to angels. Right? We understand that, right? Glory to God. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and thrones and, and, man, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Glory to God. Amen. We got these are all references to angels. We understand that when Daniel prayed, glory to God, what his prayer was held up by what? An angel. The Prince of Persia, glory to God. It was an, an, an angel. Glory to God. And then even if you say Satan, Satan ain't nothing but an angel. Glory to God. Glory to God. He created everything that we see. When did this happen? At what point in history did God create the angels? Well, remember, 
And in Job chapter 38, verse 4, God asked Job a question. He said, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Remember, Job finally got so upset, amen, that he felt like he can question God, and God went on his litany, like, where were you when I did this? Where were you, like, who are you to question me? Glory to God. And one of the things he says, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Yes, God. Then he adds in verse 7, he says, where were you when the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy? This is something that might blow your mind. What if I was telling you that the, the stars that we see in the sky are really angels? What if I were to tell you that? Praise God. Amen. That might be so far fetched, amen, for church people, but how do you know that, that people that are in the occult and witchcraft and all that, they understand that? Yeah. They understand that. But we not. And they, and they do things, amen, to get angels to fall, yeah. stars to fall in their place of worship. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Amen. But the Bible, over and over and over again, amen, the, the, the same word that they use for stars is the same word that we use for angels. And that's why. The, the, the Bible says in Hebrews that we are, we are, guess what, we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. There's nothing that we do that's not being recorded. All right. Come on, sir. God ain't recording it. The angels are recording yes. it. And he has angels, you have your angel, but there are angels that that's their job to record and look at everything that's going on on earth. When we get to heaven, we think all this video and all this stuff, we're going to see technology that's going to blow our mind. And it's all already in operation. Everything that humanity is doing is tapping into stuff, amen, glory to God, that's being utilized in heaven. Glory to God. And in hell. <laughs> Somebody say that part. Glory yeah, to God. God. Praise God. And so, we know that God formed the foundation of the earth on the third day of creation. So that means that the angels had to be in existence at least by the third day. Glory to God. So, praise God. The other question is how many were there? Or how many are there? Hebrews 12, 22 speaks of thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Amen? But the Bible, Lord and God, speaks in Psalm 68, 17, 10 thousands upon 10 thousands upon 10 thousands. In fact, in Revelation 5, 11, John says, And I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders and the numbers of those angels was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands. And that Greek word Mary represented the highest level of number in the Greek system, 10,000. And so when John said, I saw Mary's upon Mary's, he was saying, I saw 10,000 upon 10,000. Yes, God. There are literally hundreds of millions of angels, literally. Yes. Literally. Yes. Probably billions. Yes. Glory to God. Amen? And we talked about the reality in their, their, in their creation. But let's talk about their personality. Do you know that angels have personality? They have a personality. And you might say, well, what do you mean by that? I mean that, think for a moment, um, there's a difference between me and this podium. What's the difference? Look at God. I have a mind. I can think. Look at God. I have feelings and I have emotions. I have a personality. This podium doesn't. In the same way, the angels, praise God, they have a personality. They have a will. Glory to God. Praise God. They have emotions. Glory to God. Glory to God. There are three elements that constitute a personality. They have a personality. You have to first of all have intellect. You have to know things. You have to have accumulated knowledge. This podium knows absolutely nothing. It was created, right? By something or someone. But what does it know? It doesn't know anything. Secondly, you have to have emotion. You have to be able to feel things. This podium doesn't have any emotions. I can hit it, y'all don't have to feel bad about it. Because <laughs> they don't feel a thing. Right. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thirdly, you have to have a will. Mm. And that is the ability to make a choice, to make a plan, to execute the plan. I do that. This podium can't do that. Glory to God. This podium, while I'm preaching, cannot be thinking, gee, I wonder when he's going to be finished. Wow. I wonder when he's going to take these Bibles off me. I wonder when he's going to, ooh, gee, I'm tired. No, this podium don't think. Why? Because it doesn't have a personality. We have personalities. And likewise, the angels have a personality. Glory to God. This, um, and they have three elements of a personality. Glory to God. Praise God. They know things. And in some ways, their intellect is greater than ours because they have been around for a longer period of time. 
they've accumulated certain knowledge. And, and, and do you know, did you know that even the fallen angels, the demons have intelligence? Yes. They have intellect and they understand things about Jesus Christ that many humans don't understand. Yes. Yes. And Mark chapter 1, verse 24 and 34, what happened? The demons recognized Jesus as the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Alright? They didn't say, Who are you, oh great preacher or pastor or priest? Who is God? They said, What do you have to do with this, oh Son of God? They knew who he was. What am I saying? Demons have intellect. Because demons were once angels. They are angels. They are fallen angels. Right. Glory to God. Praise God. And they believe all, they, they, um, they're very orthodox in their theology. They believe all the right things about Jesus Christ. They just on the wrong side. Hmm. Praise God. They understand a lot of things probably better than we do. And there's one thing, the only thing that they don't have a clue about is our salvation. Praise God. The angels are curious about why the great God of the universe will humble himself, send his son to Calvary to die, humiliating death on our behalf. As a matter of fact, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 11, 12, Peter's talking about the prophets, how they had limited knowledge, and he was saying that the, pre the, the prophets wanted to see the day, amen, of Jesus. Glory to God. But we understand that they did not see that day. Glory to God. It was revealed to the prophets, glory to God, that they were not serving themselves, but they were serving someone who was coming later. Are you yes. here with me today? Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What Peter is saying is that they didn't understand everything that they were writing about. But how do you know that we are living out of Dominic? We're living 2,000 years after the onset of Jesus the Christ. Yes, God. So how do you know that should change our perspective? That should make us serve different. That should make us understand, praise God, that we are different. As I'm explaining, glory to God, hallelujah, amen, glory to God, amen, that we are living in a year of abundance. As we are living in a year, amen, of overflow, praise God, we need to have what we call an abundance mindset. Yes. Glory to God. We need to start thinking more than instead of less than. Yes. Glory to God. We need to start understanding that God wants us to be blessed. How many people receive that today? Yes. God's dream for your life is that you will be blessed in such a way that you can be a blessing to others. I explained that to you last night. He's not going to bless you unless you are prepared to be a blessing to other people. Yeah, when God sets you up to be a blessing to other people, how many know you need to do that and do it quickly? Yeah. Don't sit on it. Don't decide, or oh, when I get around to it, glory to God. If God told you to be a blessing, he means for you to do it right away. <laughs> glory to God. David said, amen, in Psalms 23, that he anointed my head with oil. My cup, what? Running Run over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. How many know that God is an overflow God? Yes, he is. He's not a just enough barely getting by God. He is a God of abundance. He is a God of more than enough. And how, but, but you can't go around thinking thoughts of lack. You can't go around thinking, not, not, not enough. You can't be going around struggling and, and expecting yourself and then to have abundance. Yes, God. Glory to God. We have to take God, amen, praise God, amen, as what he is. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a God of more than enough. And what happens is that if you have been under pressure, amen, for so long, amen, your speech, amen, can change, amen, to a defeated mindset, to a defeated type of speech. And how many know somebody somebody just say, I need to watch that? I need to watch that. I need to watch that. Just because you're going through a hard time don't mean that you have to talk like you, amen. Right. Praise God, you're going through a hard place. We need to learn how to allow our speech to be different than the season that we're in right now. I'm going through a hard time, amen, but God is good in my life. Amen. God is good all the time. All the time. And all the time. Glory to God. And then even when you're going through a stressful situation, they say, How you doing? You need to learn how to say, I'm too blessed. To be stressed. Y'all, before you finish that for me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. I'm not, I don't, listen, it's okay to, to, to understand that you don't have to look like what you're going through. All right. I was so happy, amen, when we went to see Sister Jackie the other day. She's in the hospital, but I told her she looks good. Mm. She don't look like she, yeah, man, man, go put her business out there. And everything that she's going through, she don't look like it. You don't have to look like what you're going through. Some of us, we go through a small thing and we act like a cat done died. Somebody done killed our best friend. We act like, Lord God, the world is going to end over small things. Lord God. God, over relationships, over different things. Lord God. And God is telling us that we got to come up to another level. 
Praise God. It's easy to develop a limited mindset. Praise God. Uh, it's easy to develop that uh, I'll, I'll never get out of this neighborhood type of mindset. Praise God. Or, or I'll never have enough money to send my cows to kids. Or uh, send some of my kids to college. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm sorry. My dyslexic thing. Glory to God. Amen. I'll, I'll never be able to do these different things. Glory to God. Amen. But we, you know, we have to be careful because you are going to have what you say. We are living in the decade of the mouth. We are living in the decade of pay. Ever since 2020, 5780, amen, which represents a pay. Whatever you say, that's what you want to have. All right. And why am I talking about Jesus, amen, Christophanes, and angel allergies, amen? Because you only can see what you expect to see. That's it, that's it. Do you know that's how our eyes work? What your mind thinks is what you actually see. Glory to God. There's been times when I thought I was looking at something else, and somebody would say, no, that's not it. You need to look at that. This is what you're really looking at. But my mind was expecting to see something else. Yeah, God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when the brain signals, amen, amen, are correct, amen, your eyes will see correctly. But you have to condition your mind to expect to see things that are outside, amen, of your humanity. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Even though if your situation is tough, that might be where you are now. But that's not where you have to stay. Glory to God. God, we call him what? El Shaddai. Mm, really? Lord God Almighty. Yeah. He is the what? He's the God of more than enough. I wish somebody was receiving this this morning. Hallelujah. He's not the God of barely enough or the God of just help me make it through. Hallelujah. He's the God of the overflow. Glory yes, to God. God. Yes, Amen. God. He's the God of Glory to God. He's the God of abundance. Glory to God. Psalms 35 says, Let them say continually that the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his children. And when they wrote that song, how many know that they were supposed to walk around continuously saying that over themselves? They were supposed to say, they were supposed to go around constantly saying, God takes pleasure in, ple in, in pleasure in me. God takes pleasure in prospering me. Somebody say that over themselves right now. God takes pleasure in prospering me. Come on, everybody say it together. God, God takes pleasure in, in prospering me. So when you go on throughout your day, go to God, because everything is good on Sunday, and while we're all together and praise God, every praise is to our God, every word of worship, word of and then go to God. When things don't look good and the money gets funny, whatever, just say, God takes pleasure in prospering me. You're not saying your own words. That's from Psalm 35. You are reciting a biblical concept. You are reciting a biblical amen, scripture. You are decreeing and declaring something that may not be not, be not, amen, as is it so, and God will make it so. Amen. Glory to God. God takes pleasure in prospering me. My God. My God. When you keep doing that, it's going to help you develop the abundant mindset. Again, we're living in a year of abundance. Praise God. Your life is moving towards what you're constantly thinking about anyway. Do you know that whatever you magnify will manifest? I know people, amen, that have thought themselves into heart attacks. They have thought themselves into panic attacks. They have thought themselves, glory to God, into divorces. They have thought themselves, amen, into unfaithfulness and different things like that. Praise God. None of these things was going on, but because they kept meditating on that, and then they magnified it. How many of they messed up their lives, messed up their bodies, messed up their relationships and their situations? Because what you magnify will manifest. And that's why God says, think on these things. Things that are lovely. Things that are a good report. Things that are holy. Things that are just. Things that are pure. Things that are peaceful. Think on these things. He said, why be not anxious with anything? But in everything, with thanksgiving and supplication, remember God, praise God. He says, stop. Hallelujah. What is what is worry? Glory to God. What is fear? Fear is false evidence of being real. A lot of stuff we're worried about ain't even going to happen anyway. Yes, God. It's false evidence. The devil's trying to make it look like it's going to happen. Oh, what's this pain in my chest? Oh, my friend just had a terrible test. Call the number one. I think I'm having one too. No, you just had some bad spaghetti. We told him to stop eating those chitlins and, 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 and hancocks. That's all. Glory to God. You ate too, 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 too late before you went to sleep. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, somebody. And then, what's up? But the salad fast is going to fix all that. Just not for salads. Glory to God. We're going to fix all that. Praise the Lord. 
Y'all can laugh. Glory to God. But your life is moving towards what you're thinking about. I want y'all to go home with that. Glory to God. If you're always thinking thoughts of lack, not enough, and struggle, I mean, are you moving towards the wrong things? All through the day, meditate on these thoughts. Overflow. Abundance. Glory to God. Prosperity. Health. Glory to God. God takes pleasure in prospering me. Everybody say it again. God takes pleasure in prospering me. Hallelujah. In the scriptures, the Israelites, glory to God, they, they have been in slavery for many years. We know that story, right? Glory to God. Amen. The Hebrews, glory to God, and God sent Moses, amen, to deliver them. Praise God. It, it, when they was in slavery, that was the land of barely enough. Glory to God. And they were just enduring. They were surviving. They were really making it through. But one good day, God brought them out of slavery, right? We won't take the time to go through that. Glory to God. Amen. But that was what? The land of just enough. God had took them, amen, from glory to God, amen, from barely enough, amen. Now they were in the wilderness, and how do you know that was the land of what we call just enough? Glory to God. The needs were supplied, but there was nothing extra. And how do you know that when you are living your life like that, God is supplying your needs, but there's nothing extra? You're really living in the land of just enough. Right. How many people live in the land of just enough? Oh, the devil is a liar. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. 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 Praise I'm the pastor. I'm living in the praise God. I want to leave. I want to. I'm so tired. I want to to mess up my past, tear up my passport, and all that. I'm tired of living in the land of just enough. Yes, yes, yes. Praise the Lord. I, I'll tell the truth. Amen. That was the land of just enough. Amen. It said it, it, the Bible says that the clothes didn't wear out for forty years, and I'm sure that they were grateful. But how many of you want to wear the same clothes for forty years? Praise the Lord. I would be grateful, yes, but God, I don't want to wear these stuff. No, Can we just get some new clothes every once in a while? Can I buy some new Nikes or Converse's or something? Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but that's how I feel. I don't particularly want to do that. Amen? If I, if, if, if I have to, I'm not going to complain. But amen? But that's not my I, idea of abundance. Somebody say abundance. abundance. And it wasn't God's either. Amen? So what happened? God eventually took them into the promised land. Glory to God. And that was the land of what? More than enough. Yeah. What I'm saying is that God will take you from barely enough, amen, to just enough, amen, to more than enough. And I want to move from just enough, amen, to more than enough. How many people want to move to there with me? Oh, move to God. Money. Amen. How many know that, amen, you have to go through the process yeah. so that God can show you purpose so that he can deliver you into your promise? Glory to God. That is the land flowing with milk and honey. The Bible says he put them in the land flowing with milk and honey. That the grapes were so big that, that two people had to carry the grapes. That's how, that's the abundance, amen, that God really has for us. God wants us to be blessed, amen. He wants to enlarge our tent like he did for Jacob's. He wants to increase our land. Glory to God. But we got to pray to him the right way. We got to decree the right things and understand that God is a God that wants to bless us. For I know the plan that I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plan to bring you to an expected end. Yes. Glory to God. God wants you to be blessed. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. But amen. Your thoughts, amen. Glory to God. Amen. Is, it, it dictates where you are going to wind up at. Because we are moving, amen, in the direction of our thoughts. Mm. God has placed angels in our lives. Yes, Lord. He's placed people around us to help us. But some of us have such a bad mindset, sticking thinking. A lot of people have came to the church and left and that. Their mindset was so bad, they couldn't get past some things. And guess what? The devil was able to root them out right. of where God really called them in. Right. They were in the place of their purpose, the place of their problem. The only place that God was going to allow them to be, do whatever God was going to do with them. And, man, and how many know they allowed their thinking, praise God, mm. to move them from where God wanted them to be? Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Flowing means it didn't stop. The land flowing with milk and honey. And that's where God wants us all to be. And this year, this is a year of abundance. Praise God. That when God starts blessing you, it ain't going to stop. How many of you received that this morning? Hallelujah. Praise God. There's a story, amen, of, of Elijah, amen, where, where he went to the woman, amen, and he said, go and make me some food, glory to God, and I know the story, praise God, and he told her to bring the pots, glory to God, and she needed some oil, amen, glory to God, amen, and if she would have kept bringing the oil, how many know it would have, that the oil would have never stopped flowing? Right. 
it would have never stopped flowing. And all God wants is for you to bring, give, give him what, what you have. Do what you can do for him. Bring what you can bring to him. Yes, God. Glory to God. Amen? And you'll be okay. Glory to God. God will never stop supplying all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Glory to God. But you got to be obedient. Hallelujah. Glory to God. To what he wants. Glory to God. And how he wants to do it. Yes. You have to be obedient. Glory to God. Because heaven of God will call you up. All right. He will show you up. Show you up. He, will, he will do it. Mm -hmm. He will do it. Praise God. And you'll be sitting there looking silly. Mm -hmm. When I said, all I ask you to do is do what I told you to do. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're living in a year where we want to see things that's going to confound us. We're living in a year where we need to prepare our hearts and our minds. Some of us need to be more concerned about spiritual things instead of everything else that you're thinking about. Some of us can't give God an hour, two hours, three hours. But yet, we act like we're the most spiritual person in the room. And God is just saying, you need to chill out and allow me to direct you in this year. Because this is a year of retribution. Just sit down and listen. Let me pour into you. Because how can you pour into somebody else if you don't know nothing? In this year. Year of overflow. Year of abundance. Glory to God. God is going to bless us to be a blessing to somebody else. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you one more story about angels. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because they're real. They're real. They're real. Hallelujah. In Revelation 10, we're told about a mighty angel who put one foot on a continent and then he put another foot on the sea. So, it means that there are angels that are huge, that are so big, amen, that their head literally reached the clouds. And the Bible lets us know in Revelation 10 that when he was about to speak, God told John to not write what he said. Because I believe it would have revealed too much to the readers, amen, glory to God, about heavenly things, glory to God. If you read, glory to God, hallelujah. There's a lot there, amen. But how I many you know that there are a lot of false spirits, a lot of false religions have been have been created by angels. Islam was created by an angel, you know that. Supposedly in 632, amen, Muhammad was in a cave and, and, and an angel named Gabriel came to him, glory to God. And how I many know he debunked everything in the Bible, he changed everything up, amen, but that's where we get the, amen, the, the religion called Islam. The same thing happened, amen, with Joseph Smith, amen, and Mormon, the Book of Mormonism. And then the angel Morana came to him, amen, and gave him the plates and all of these different things. And we could go on and on and on and on and on. Glory to God. And so we have to be very careful to understand, glory to God, the difference between God's angels and demonic angels. Every time a heavenly angel shows up, Glory to God. Praise God. You want to be scared. Yeah. Every time one of God's angels showed up to a regular human being, you know what they say? Fear not. Meaning like, I didn't come to take your life. Right. I didn't come because they are they are awesome in their appearance. Awesome in their appearance. Mm. There's a story of a well-known preacher. And he was going through some things and yet pastor for many years. The church was going through some issues. And he was thinking that maybe I should give this up. He was asking God, God, is it time for me to relinquish to somebody else? And he said he was so tired one day. And one day he was in his office. And he said he felt a presence. He felt a presence. And he said it was like somebody was in the room, but he just couldn't see him. And he said, reveal yourself. And he said, as he said that, 
He said there was a third, there were three seats in front of his desk. He said there was like a light, and the light started in the middle, and then he said the light just continuously progressed until it was, he said the most beautiful man, he's not gay, he said the most beautiful man he'd ever seen in his life was sitting there, Lord to God, and, and he started to tell, to tell um, him what God was saying concerning me. You're not done yet, I'm not done with you. He said all these different things. And he told him everything that was going to happen in the next five or ten years. Glory to God. All right? Amen? Praise God. What am I saying to you? Is that God is still using his angels. God is still sending his angels. Glory to God. Amen? Praise God. But if we don't expect to see them, if we are, praise God, amen, if we don't believe that they exist, Praise God. If we take church as just some spiritual activity, if we are religious minded, how many of we can miss the activity of God? There's another story. I don't have time to read it, amen. Perfectly glory to God. Amen. But it's another minister. Amen. And he was a minister, but he also had a regular job, and his job was working with the airlines. Alright? Glory to God. And one time he was supposed to be taking a flight, and his family was waiting for him. And they would give him free airfare because he worked for the airlines. But one time he was going to, he was going to take a flight and it was during the holidays and he really wanted to get home. But somebody came and had a paid ticket and bumped him out of his seat. He was very upset. He called his wife, he called his children. I won't be home. I really apologize. All right. But what happened is that that flight went up in the air and that flight uh, that had, an engine, uh, had an engine malfunction and everybody on the plane died. The, the, the airplane crashed, everybody on the plane died. And so that preacher, Lord to God, believes, amen, Lord to God, and he went to his death understanding, Lord to God, amen, that God utilized an angel to save his life. Yeah. He wasn't done yet. Why am I telling you all of this kind of stuff? Because this is going to be a year for some of us of angelic encounters. Angelic encounters. I believe there were many instances in my life with angels help me. I'll find out if it's true once I get there. When I was young, praise God, and man, we used to walk to school and walk back home. It wasn't like now when you had to stay home where it's snow. We were walking the snow. It was a blizzard one day. I lived in Philadelphia. You understand what I mean, man of God? And we walked miles to school, miles back home. And I was coming back home to my grandmother's house. And I got disoriented. No day I was with my sister. This day I was by myself. And I lost my way home. It was so, the snow was coming down so much that I couldn't see. And I was a little kid, probably eight, nine years old, nine years old, 10 years old, something like that. And, and I got lost. And all I remember is that I stopped. I got so cold that I stopped where I was. I didn't know where I was. A car pulled up on the side of me. And this is not something I recommend you to do. But he called me by name. He said, Larry. And the car seemed like it was so warm, I could feel the warmth coming out of the car, right? He's like, come on, said, come on, come on, I'm going to take you home, get in the car. And I was so cold, <laughs> just like, I didn't know what to do, but I got in the car, and he dropped me off right in front of my grandma Barbara house. So, yeah, you know, when I went in, she's like, you know, and she, you know, and she said, thank you, and all that, and she, and she grabbed me and put me in the house, and I was so cold. Back then, they used to do different things. I had to put my hands under my butt and all of this kind of stuff. And she, she was afraid I had false bite and all of that, glory to God. Amen. But I didn't think about it until later that, like, uh, I don't know who the guy was. She didn't know who the person was, glory to God. Amen. This was an angel in Germany. Yeah. You know, and before you go to all those people, a lot of kids, you know, die and stuff like that, situations like that. Glory to God. Nobody would have known. Right. The weather was that bad. It was that bad. I would have been done before somebody found me, laying down, whatever the case is, whatever. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And I had, I had instances like that in my life. In the military, I won't spend the time. Glory to God. Amen. But when you have purpose in your life, God will dispatch angels. Yeah. The Bible says, be careful because some of you entertain angels unaware. So, some of you that got these bad attitudes, be careful. What are the angels reporting back concerning you? What are they writing concerning you? Some of us mothers, you understand, imagine that. God sent his angel and you get smart. You have a bad attitude. Some angels can read our minds. You understand that? Lord God. Praise God. The Bible says Sarah laughed and men glory to God. And she said, no, I didn't. And they basically told her, yes, she did. 
Glory to God. Praise God. And we have to be careful because God wants to help us. Amen. Hallelujah. I know this was a basic message, amen, but God told me to bring this message. Amen. Hallelujah. This is going to be a special year. Praise God. In the world, things are going to happen that's going to make other people scared. But for us, we shouldn't be scared. You heard it here first. We should not be afraid. Glory to God. There are other things out there. We already know it. It's been hidden for many, many years. This is the year, praise God, where God is going to allow certain information to be revealed. When it happens, don't allow your heart to be troubled. God is still in control. The Bible is still true. And God already knows these things before it happens. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Can we give God a hand clap for that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many people, amen, hallelujah, wants to, amen, encounter angels? Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God because God is blessing us and he's prospering us. And so God, we bless you for the message, God, Lord, even on today. God, Lord, we thank you, God, Lord, for your host of angels, God, Lord, that encamp around those that fear them. The Bible says that fear you, God, Father, God, Lord. And so, God, Lord, we are humbly, God, Lord, coming to you today. God, Lord, we humble our spirit, God, Lord, to understand that we don't know everything, God, Lord. Oh, Father, God, Lord, listening to what it is that you want to impart into our spirit on today. Father, God, Lord, understanding, God, Lord, that it's a reason, God. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what next week is going to bring. We don't know what next month is going to bring. But God, Lord, we know, God, Lord, that you are already preparing, God, Lord, heavenly angels. Hallelujah. To help us through every situation that we go through. You said you would never leave us. And you said you would never forsake us, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we bless you, God, Lord, for how you do things because you do all things well. So I pray, God, Lord, for everybody in this room. Oh, God, Lord, everybody that's listening, everybody that will listen, that you will go before us and that every enemy will be scattered. We thank you, God, Lord, for 5783, the year of Gimel. We thank you, God, for the year of retribution, the year, God, Lord, of holy abundance. We thank you, Lord, for the year of overflow. God, Lord, we receive it either right now. Everything you have concerned us, we receive it. We pray that you remove every delay, that you destroy every denial concerning every good thing that you have said concerning us in our lives, even now, God, in Jesus' name. For some of us, God, Lord, this will be the year, God, that we get engaged. For some of us, God, this will be the year that we get married. God, for some of us, this will be the year, God, Lord, that we will become millionaires. For some of us, this will be the year that we start our business. For some of us, God, this is going to be the year that we write our book or write our the next book, God, Lord. For some of us, God, Lord, this is going to be the year. Hallelujah, Father, God, Lord, that you give us, God, that idea, oh, God, Lord, that shifts our lives, the trajectory of our lives. And we receive it even right now. And we say, God, thank you, God. Because you always want to prosper us. Oh, we bless you, Father God, because you are in the blessing business. We bless you, Father God, because you are in the prospering business. We bless you, God, Lord, because you are in the abundance business. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, because you are in the, in the overflow business. And we receive it even now. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God, Lord, and we honor you. We pray that any demonic coming that we made on last year and we took into this year, we cancel. Any black magic, any voodoo, any old beer, any juju, any santaria, any woodwork, any word curse, and act of Jesus, we bind it now in the name of Jesus and we send it back to sin. Bless us, God, Lord. Even as we prepare, God, Lord, to go into a time of consecration. Hallelujah, God, Lord. I know, God, Lord, that some of us, God, Lord, will encounter angelic activity during this 21 day fast. I pray that you prepare our hearts, God, Lord. Oh, God, and that we may not miss the message. We pray that you show up in dreams, God, Lord. I pray that you give us visions, even. Hallelujah, God, Lord. Hallelujah. And that we pray in no way, God, Lord, miss what it is that you're doing in this season. We thank you, God. We honor you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. We say amen. 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 Both of you. Put your hands together, amen, for Mother Dawson as she comes to give us the benediction.